couldn't have picked a worse, well, better day to take the boat out, see how the Grady performs, but also to test out the new Seakeeper one that we've just fitted to this beauty. So it was pretty, it was pretty rough to be honest. If it wasn't, uh, if we probably weren't doing the boat test. I mean, there, there weren't many other boats out there. I think there was one other, one other fishing charter out there which turned around shortly after they got got past the head. So uh, it wasn't really a day for leisure boating, but for the purpose of, of us going out there, it was perfect conditions. Yes, yeah, so the boat we're on board today is a Grady White 271 Canyon. It's a, a customer of ours. We handed the boat over probably about six months ago now. It's 27 foot, it's 2.89 metres wide. And with the Sea Keeper added and some extra batteries and things that we've added, it sits at around four tonnes. So the boat naturally is an extremely stable boat at rest and on the troll. It's powered by twin 300, which actually makes this boat, given it's only 27 feet, it's one of the quickest boats in the entire Grady White range. It does a little over 50 knots. The owner specifically that owns this boat, he's, he's you know, in his late 60s now, and, and one of the big uh, non-negotiables for him moving into this boat was that we could fit a Sea Keeper 1. You're sick of sort of getting be beaten up, and as we sort of experienced today, um, you, you really don't get thrown around. Like that movement of getting thrown around and having to hold on to take photos or take videos or prep, you know, prep your bait and things like that, it just really takes that out of it, which is, it's magic. And I don't think we could have really tested it on a, on a better day and in worse slash better conditions than what we did today. So the science behind the Sea Keeper, to be honest, I have no idea how it actually works. I just know that it fucking does. <laughs> it's a little white gyroscope that's, that's fitted really neatly inside this concealed box. The Sea Keeper 1 can be mounted on boats as small as 23 feet. It only requires 12 volt DC power, which is great for boats this size. So it draws 50 amps power on the initial spool up, which can last anywhere between 15 and 30 minutes. Uh, but once it's spooled up and you're out offshore, it will draw anywhere between 18 and 30 amps. Uh, the reason that varies from 18 to 30 amps is, you know, that's just dependent on the sea, can, the sea state and how much the boat's rocking and rolling around. Its footprint is only 60 centimetres long, 60 wide and 40 centimetres high. So it weighs only 165 kilos and sadly I know some skippers that weigh more than that. The flywheel spins up to 10,000 RPM but you can barely hear it. It's also water-cooled with their patent cooling system. The gyro and all its key components are completely sealed from the marine environment. I'm not going to get into tech speak, but I can tell you that it takes about 15 minutes to fire up before the boat is fully stable. So today, while we're offshore in those pretty ordinary conditions, we eliminated 91% of the boat's role. In terms of cost, uh, the installation is just naturally going to vary boat to boat, you know, depending on the access but for the unit itself, you're looking around the 25K mark, which after today is really great value for money. As we saw today, um, you know, in conditions like that and for, out, for being out as long as we're out, most people would really probably would have came home with a bit of a sick belly. Everyone asks what happens when the boat goes around corners and does it turn flat like the Captain Shark hat? Well, the answer is no. It doesn't stop the boat from heeling over. It counteracts wave action so for example, if you were to sit three or four or five people on one side, the boat would still heel. Um, it's, it, it only really comes into play and kicks into gear when it's actually counteracting a, a more sudden movement. Uh, and that's why it can distinguish from the rolling, rocking and rolling of waves. And then when the boat's healing and turning, uh, healing into a turn. Yeah, so a bit about this boat. Um, the customer has actually came from a Boston Whaler 285 Conquest, which is a, a, a bigger cabin version. And he's, he had quite a few requests that he came to us. He was a, you know, probably five, five weeks worth of customization work to this thing, which included fitting the Sea Keeper 1 uh, at the back, but we also added um, added extra framing and this, this Perspex as, um, as windshield around the, around the hard top, which we we're out today and we just, you know, we just explained how, how shitty it was. You probably saw just how shitty it was out there and Jack and I are still bone dry. And to go out in a centre console and still come back bone dry, like that's sort of unheard of, especially in those sort of conditions. And then probably the, probably the biggest part of the customization was fitting that Sea Keeper 1 to the, to the transom area. We had to get in underneath that fish box, which involved quite a bit of work. Uh, we had to strengthen up the bearer with an aluminium top uh, then fiberglass that all in for extra strength, just as per the Sea Keeper spec. 
Once we'd sort of glassed that in, we float coated the area to make it all look factory. And then from there, to be honest, fitting the actual sea keeper wasn't wasn't a very big job. You know, that, that in itself wasn't wasn't a big install. For us it was getting the access to be able to do the install, it, running the, the skin fittings for the water pickup and the power to it. It all came together and you know, a big thing that the guys really pride themselves on is when they do that sort of custom work is making it look factory, which I think if you didn't know what you were sort of looking at here, it definitely does tick that box. We opted for two slimy tubes down the back. Predominantly uses the boat to go king fishing. He's got a second live well that we fitted at the back as well, which he likes to keep, that's purely for squid. He likes to keep his, likes to keep his squid out of the boat for, for obvious, obvious reasons. Um, so he's got that fit at the back and then we've got the other live well just forward of that, which is where, he's, where he keeps his liveies. His tackle storage and rod storage was a big concern. We managed to tick that box by fully customising the tackle storage in behind the helm station there. In addition to that, we also fitted the, the, the downrigger, the cannon downrigger on the, that port aft quarter there. Uh, we did a full Furuno electronics fit out and also we haven't done it yet, but we fitted a lithium, we've got the lithium um, bank uh, up forward as well. And there's a Min Coda that's also being fitted to the bow. And that also just counters that weight, even though the Sea Keeper one's only about 160 kilos odd, um, having that Min Coda up the front and that extra battery system still makes sure that the boat runs level and, and how it's supposed to.